So steady state extended zone two rides have a tendency of becoming quite boring. So I thought I'll buy a gravel bike, I'll swap out my zone two rides on the road to gravel rides and that'll do the job. Did it? Kind of, but there's a trade-off. So first of all, I love the gravel bike. Um, in frankness, I kind of knew I would love it even before I got a gravel bike. You know, I kind of lean more towards the road cycling spectrum uh, or side of the spectrum. Uh, but the concept of getting a bike that would allow me to go ride on roads that I wouldn't normally ride on with my road bike, kind of spice things up a little bit, yet still maintain that roady element to it, it just made sense. And you know, when I got the bike, it absolutely made sense. So now here, I've just left the house. I'm about 10, 15 minutes into my ride. And granted, what I'm about to show you, it is, it is winter, I mean, it's autumn, it's fall. But this is what I come across on what is supposed to be a gravel route. I think we can agree we're not going to ride through that. So I have to turn back and kind of improvise. This kind of halted my ride and is far from ideal if what you have on the program today is an extended steady state zone 2 ride. of becoming quite boring and that's especially true when you know you kind of have to keep riding on the same roads and I'm gonna assume that most of you watching this live in one place and uh, don't quite have the jet-setting lifestyle of being able to bounce around the globe and then ride your bike uh, in different places you know there's only that many directions that you can go in and at some point you'd, you'd have seen them all and then you know these zone 2 rides they have you know they can become quite a chore so now why these zone 2 rides are so important to your performance uh, I'm not gonna get into that here if you're interested in kind of finding out the finer details as to why that is there's a truckload of information out there that will go into an enormous amount of detail as to why that is so if that's your bag, go ahead and check that out. What I can talk about is my personal experience and how I really do see or can feel the reason why I would want to incorporate these longer zone two rides. And for me, it's in like the latter stages of an event, let's say fourth, fifth hour, I can recover from a effort relatively between massive quotation marks easily. So if I'm putting in an effort to just kind of hang on to the end, to the end of a group or you know put the power down on a, on a climb I can then settle into my zone 2 wattage you know without much trouble that is when I'm in peak fit uh, in, in shape right when I'm peaking and so that sort of sensation is just it's amazing it makes you feel super powerful and it makes you feel good and strong on the bike and so that for me Aside from all the scientific explanations, is how I see the biggest benefits and why I actually do them. So the key to a good zone two ride, a productive zone two ride, is continuous pressure through the pedals at zone two wattage. You wanna maximize your, your time in zone two and minimize your time in other zones. 
a good way to gauge that, I find, is uh, making sure that your average power is very close to your normalized power. Alrighty, halfway in with the ride. I just had a quick stop for a bite to eat and a nature break. And uh, before I crack on, I'm going to talk a little bit about the terrain. Terrain is important if you're setting out to do a productive zone 2 ride. For example, if you're going to go and ride uh, in, in, on a terrain that's kind of very punchy, short, steep climbs, not ideal because you'll be going into zone 3, zone 4 uh, when you're climbing and then you're coasting on the way back down, so not ideal. Very mountainous terrain can be suitable if you're fit enough to be able to hold zone two, higher zone two as you're climbing, and be good climbing training, then obviously you coast on the way down and then you repeat when you uh, attack the next climb. This sort of stuff behind me, again, isn't ideal for that continuous, continuous, uh, sorry, pressure through the pedals. So, um, if we're being very honest, the perfect environment for zone two training is indoors on the turbo. You stick it on erg mode, you select your desired wattage and off you go. But I do think we can agree that's not a great way to overcome zone two boredom. All right, so now that I've made it out of that mud bath, let's talk a little bit about the trade-off that you have to be willing to make if you swap out your zone two rides on the road to gravel rides. So your train is going to be less efficient. It's going to be more fun, but less efficient. Gravel riding is more dynamic. That's where the fun lies. And you're going to end up doing more power in zones that you shouldn't be doing them if your goal is a serious, extended, dedicated zone two ride. Gravel riding is fun. You got to get a bit of gets a bit technical, you gotta put more power down, you gotta balance yourself, you gotta keep the pedals, uh, you, 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 you know, you're not pedaling at some point as well. You know, as an example, you know, looking at the terrain that I had just there, I had to get off the bike, you know, kind of carry it, and then get back on the bike. Not ideal circumstances for a zone two ride, great circumstances for an adventure ride. And don't get me wrong, uh, I absolutely love these rides, but, it's kind of a trade-off that you have to be willing to make and that you have to be conscious of. For me, I'm willing to make that earlier on in a prep uh, because I know that even on these types of rides, I still get time in zone two in. So that's the bike clean done with the ride. Let's take a look, three hours in the bank. So happy with that. Let's take a look at the numbers, 169 normalized and I think 164 average. So quite happy with how close those two are together. A solid uh, first three hour endurance ride of the prep. This ride kind of concludes uh, my overload week. Uh, this week I did the first couple of efforts, nothing too crazy, some tempo, and it was the highest volume in terms of training that I've done so far in this prep. Next week, uh, I'm gonna just tone it down a little bit, not a full recovery week, but just a little bit because, you know, haven't done an awful lot of load, haven't done an awful lot of vol volume just yet. And then basically we'll power through right into December with continuous efforts, kind of getting that fitness uh to continuously to rise so hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit the like and subscribe button and i will see you in the next one